In this week's web video fishing forecast for New England, we've got word of a free blackfish seminar for you this Thursday night, ice fishing reports from Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and Connecticut, trout fishing success, as well as stocking updates for New England, details on the March monthly issue of the Fisherman Magazine, which is due out this week, and much, much more. Check it out. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. One. Hey there, Toby Lipinski for the New England edition of the Fisherman Magazine with this week's web video fishing forecast. Of course, once again, before I get into the video, I gotta remind you to like this video, comment down below if you've got any questions or if you'd like to add anything to the discussion. Of course, subscribe to the Fisherman Magazine YouTube channel and be sure to tap the bell to get immediate notification when we post new content. All right, before I get into the reports, I'm gonna kick things off this week by letting you know um, that I'm gonna be joining the guys over at Black Hawk on Thursday night, that's February 25th, roughly 7 p.m. I'm gonna be doing a free seminar on black fishing. Now, it's gonna be broadcast live on the Black Hawk's uh, Facebook page. Uh, we're gonna cover a little bit of everything, uh, probably, Obviously, uh, a small boat and party boat might get into a little bit of shore, to shore black fishing, maybe even some kayak talk, rigging, techniques, tactics, all the uh, uh, the stuff you're going to need to know to get in on blackfish season, which really just starts in about a month for us here in Connecticut. Um, but nonetheless, head on over to thefisherman.com right now. I've got a link posted with all of the details as well as a link from that post directly to the Black Hawks uh, Facebook page. And uh, it's going to be a live video, uh, rather free form. So if you've got any questions that either come up, you've like, you would like answered, what have you, feel free to post them live and we will do our best as a team to address your comments, concerns, and questions on everything Blackfish. All right, gonna jump into the reports now where uh, once again, it's, it's all about ice fishing as the cod boats pretty much remain stuck to the dock again this week uh, all across New England. Didn't hear of anyone that was able to get out for cod. So uh, I got to start up in Massachusetts where I heard from Steve Schott, longtime fisherman subscriber. He checked in a report, an absolute banner day on the ice. Uh, he said he was fishing about 15 miles or so northwest of Boston. Got into a load of yellow perch, which uh, produced an awesome fish fry, I'm sure, for him. But a buddy of his who was fishing with him landed three Catch and Release Division, Massachusetts State Pinfish. That's a largemouth bass exceeding 21 inches. So congratulations to both of you guys. That is an awesome day on the ice for sure. Then moving on down I-95 into Rhodey. Talked to my buddy Gil Bell again this week. Talked a few times. Uh, he was back out on the ice over the weekend hunting some slab crappy. Send me this picture of a nice 14 incher he landed. Uh, he said that he got it on an Algags 1 16th ounce Steely Ely with a three inch pink tail. And he noted this has been absolutely his best producer on the ice of a late. So there's a little tip for you. Um, we talked some, some more about ice fishing. He did note that um, fishable, safe fishable ice in his area of Rhode Island uh, uh, was deteriorating at a rapid pace, thanks in no small part to this warmish weather and the rains that we saw this week. So of course, if you plan to head out and ice fish this weekend, no matter where you go, as always, you should extreme, you know, uh, 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 exercise extreme caution, but even more so this week with the warm rains that we saw. Moving on into Connecticut, got this awesome photo of a six and a half pound northern pike that was iced over the weekend by six year old Eric Adams while he was fishing with his dad. Now, this was Eric's biggest pike to date, but it adds to a great score of fish that he has iced this winter, which includes trout, perch, pickerel, and a bunch of pike. Uh, while I didn't get exactly uh, notes on where they were fishing, did indicate that it was somewhere up in the northwest corner of Connecticut where there is still plenty of ice to fish. And moving on down into the central Connecticut area, the, the coves of the Connecticut River always produce really good winter fishing. Whether it's open water before and after freeze or during the height, heat, the height excuse me, of winter as we have right now when guys are out on the ice. And Weathersfield Cove is no exception. It draws an, a, a lot of anglers, it's easily accessible, and it always produces. I received a text from a friend of mine on Sunday. He was driving down I-91, and he guessed there must have been 100 people out on the ice. And then later that day, I received this picture from Aaron Coldsedge of an awesome crappie that his daughter, Aubrey, jigged up from Weathersfield Cove. Although I'm not sure if they were out in the midst of that crowd on Sunday, uh, he did confirm that they got it at Weathersfield Cove. But 
Someone who was on the ice in the midst of that crowd was regular video contributor for us, Dave Bocas. And he was, this time around, he was fishing with his buddy, Jeff Anthony. Now, one of the big draws of Weathersfield Cove is, is pretty much the variety of species that you can catch, as I've heard of just about everything that you can find in the Connecticut River iced in Weathersfield Cove at one point or another over the years. I mean, this, could, this includes catfish, eels, striped bass, uh, 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 pike, perch. Again, if you see it on the river, if you've caught it on the river, odds are you could probably get them in Weathersfield Cove. Well, Jeff, added to this confirmed variety of iced species at Weathersfield Cove this week when he looked at a rather unexpected cart, uh, catch, this really big carp. Now he said he was fishing a small yellow tungsten jig when the big old goldfish struck and the fight took a good 10 minutes. Uh, and then it took Dave a handful of attempts to pull the carp through the ice as it was just a six inch hole since they were uh, uh, jigging for panfish at the time. Took a couple of pictures, then went to release it and had some more trouble getting the cart back down through the hole. But they succeeded, swam away good. So, a bit of an unexpected catch. You really never know what you're going to catch, especially fishing on the Connecticut River these days. All right, moving away from the ice, for those of you who don't like the hard water, hard water fishing, uh, Connecticut has begun its annual winter trout stocking, hitting several local water bodies in the past week. Uh, start off some of the TMAs across the state, which remain open to catch and release angling all winter long. Some of them do have specific regulations, for instance, fly only. Uh, the TMA's stock this week includes uh, Mill River TMA, Farmington River TMA, the Yantic River TMA, Sagatuck River TMA, and a bunch of others. And on the lake side of things, they, they put some, some uh, larger trout, averaging 16 inches, into a few of the more popular ice fishing lakes, including East Twin, Crystal Lake, West Hill Pond, Highland, and a few others. Uh, now keep in mind that uh, trout stocked waters close to all angling uh, in Connecticut, regardless of your target species on the last day of February. Uh, but again, that's aside from the TMAs, which remain open to catch and release. And some of them, again, have specific fly only, for instance, regulations. Uh, you can keep track of where the state has stocked with their daily stocking updates made available by visiting Connecticut Fish and Wildlife Facebook page, as well as the Connecticut DEP Interactive Trout Stocking Map, which is available online. I believe they update that one every day at 4 p.m. Uh, I checked in on Rhode Island as well as Massachusetts websites to see where their trout stocking stood at this time. Neither indicated that they had begun just yet, but I fully anticipate in the next two weeks or so that both states will be well underway. Of course, Rhode Island, similar to uh, uh, Connecticut, as of the last day of February, you cannot fish trout stocked waters. And then up in Massachusetts, there's no closed season. So once the trout are there, you're welcome to hammer away at them. Uh, speaking of getting out for trout, I even snuck out for an extended lunch break one day this week. Hit one of those fly-only TMAs that was stocked this week and found surprisingly good action. And really surprisingly uh, was the amount of bug activity I found in the form of black stonefly hatches. Uh, pretty much all the snow along the shoreline as well as any snow-covered rocks that were exposed out in the middle of the flow were absolutely covered in the little stones. Um, my fishing partner for the day, Chris Wall had success on a dry dropper combo with both uh, flies, the dry as well as the nymph down below, imitating the black stones. Uh, I was swinging jigged streamers, trying to, to fool some of the new stockies. Didn't have too much success landing, had a couple of bumps. Then I switched over to an egg pattern with a uh, uh, heavy weighted stone fly to get it down and the junk fly as is so often the case produced some action for me so it, it uh, might not be very glamorous but it always pays off in the winter to keep some keep some junk flies on hand and for those of you who have little or no interest in braving the cold right now for your fish, uh, Fisherman subscriber Alan Sheriff is still down in Florida and he checked in once again with another report for us. With windy conditions on Monday, he had to bag an offshore trip he had planned for blackfin tuna and instead stayed inshore where he and his buddies got on some really good catch and release action on redfish and snook. Now Alan's planning to head offshore as soon as a weather window opens up for him so he'll sure be sure to report back and i will pass it along i'm eager to see how well he does on those tuna 
And then last up this week, uh, the March issue of the Fisherman Magazine is out right now. It hit thefisherman.com on Monday and will be in your mailbox and at newsstands later this week. In this month's issue, we got a bunch of articles to help you pass the time if you would rather stay indoors. And we kick off Dave Anderson's annual plug building series, the first installment of the season. This go around has a mini bottle plug being covered. Really cool plug that Dave, uh, I've been hounding Dave for a while to do the bottle plug. So he finally, uh, uh, finally gave it a shot. Really interesting for those of you that build, or even those of you like myself that don't build plugs and are just interested in how they're made, the history, and so forth. Uh, Dave came up with a pretty cool technique for making the cup on the bottle plug, so give that a look. And uh, next month, he plans to cover a vintage classic, the Point Jude Cutlass, so stay tuned. Once that one is out in April, I'll be sure to let you know. Also in this issue, for those of you who are looking to wet a line today, we've got plenty of coverage for you. Um, Timely topics include a really good article by Steve Colton, this time tackling transition trout in this time we're in right now between winter and spring leading up to the mass uh, uh, stocking that takes place. Steve and I fished a couple weeks ago, got some pictures for that article, so give it a look, it's at thefisherman.com. We also got a really cool article from Steve uh, excuse me, Dave Pickering, my bet, on uh, winter carp fishing, which is an awesome option uh, for some really big winter fish. Carp still rem remain active throughout the winter. If you can find some open water, or hey, as I noted earlier, even pulling them through the ice, they're a really good cold weather option. And also a good article for a cold weather tactic, uh, the hair rig jig or jig and float tactic, which is excellent, especially right after ice out into the pre-spawn stage, which we'll be entering in the next couple of weeks. Again, all of those articles and much, much more are available at thefisherman.com. And of course, if you plan to head out and fish this weekend, be sure to start off your trip by visiting thefisherman.com. Steigercraft boats built by people who fish our waters. Serious anglers choose Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you.